Hello. Uh, so today, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give you a really fast video on uh, two things, the do loop, or the do while loop, I'm sorry, as well as a brief introduction into uh, real-time clocks or timers that are built into Arduino and handily available on the uh, Teensy. Um, so you can see here I have my standard set up here. Uh, I am going to be uh, running my my Sir window at 9600. I have it waiting until the window is open, but I'm going to leave it open. Um, my computer here is pretty slow, so I throw in that extra half second delay just to make sure it communicates. I've got my main loop. Every time the loop starts, it's going to spit out the starting examples. It does whatever functions I've called. And then to let me know that in fact it's ending the loop and before it goes into my infinite loop here this perpetual while true which will trap it until the power runs out it's going to let us know that it's entering the infinite loop like it did here then it enters into this while true statement which of course just cycles it and cycles it and cycles it with no escape um, so let's take a look at the the code. And these are, believe it or not, this is the only example I'm going to do in this video. Um, because while loops and do while loops are very, very similar with one very, very, very important difference. Um, you can see that the while loop, which you're familiar with, the condition is checked at the beginning before it, uh, it does its looping thing. Okay, So it determines whether or not the statement is true or false, then proceeds through. Okay not the case with the do loop, right? The do loop is going to run one time regardless of whether or not the condition is true or false. It doesn't check it until after it's run one time, okay? So if I run this, uh, which I'll do right now, it'll do exactly what you expect. It's going to spit out the number. It's going to increment it by one, and it's going to delay for half a second. So we started at zero, and it goes one, two, three, four. Of course, when it got to five, it came up here and exited. And in here again, we started off with zero. We display the number. We increment it by one. So it goes zero, one, zero, two, three, four. When it got to five, it exited out the loop. So in this, each case, it printed between zero and four, just like you'd expect. And if I go ahead and jump these guys right up to four, um, you're going to see pretty much the same thing, although you'll miss all the other digits. But four is certainly less than five, so it's going to run once, and you'll get a four. And four is less than five. It spits out the four, it printed it, incremented it to five, and then exited. So our outputs are the same. Where it really starts to get kind of interesting and noteworthy is if we increase it to five. Okay, in this case. The while true is going, I'm sorry, the while counter is less than five is going to immediately exit out, okay? Because five is not less than five. In this case, it's going to run at least once regardless, right? So it spits out five, increments to six, waits for half a second, and six is not less than five. So it exits out, all right? So we still have it displaying that one uh, five right there. So that's it for do uh, while loops. I, I hope everything else is fine. Now let's take a quick look at these uh, timers. There's only two things I kind of want you to know. That is the two built-in functions, millis and micros. If I call millis, it's going to tell me the number of milliseconds since the application ran or started running. Okay. I have no way to particularly set this number. It's going to be how long has it been since it turned on, or how long has it been since it's been compiled and running. Um, same with the micro. It's going to output this in milliseconds. This is going to output it in microseconds. So if I go up here, I'm going to go ahead and comment that out so I don't watch it again. Bring that one forward. What you'll see it's going to do is it's going to load this variable that we've created. Um, here it is, an unsigned long, and it's going to start loading it up and it's going to display it each time it runs and everything's looking fantastic, right? I told it to wait for 1,000 milliseconds, so you'd expect these things go up by essentially 1,000 milliseconds. You can see the 268 is holding perfect, perfect. Oh, wait a second. 269, hmm. 
something happened. Okay, well, let's keep an eye on this. And you can probably tell by my sarcastic tone of voice. I'm not surprised. Uh, let's keep watching. There's our 269, 269. And should happen pretty quick. Within about, there it is. Okay, let me stop the scrolling. So now it incremented up to 270, and of course, eventually it'll get to 271 and 272. Nothing's broken. Okay, it's waiting a thousand milliseconds. Everything's perfect, but let's take a look. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I think I might have lost count. I think it's 28, maybe 29. 29 of these events is two 69s that have popped out. So if I take a look at that, a thousand milliseconds divided by 29, we find out that actually it takes about 34, 35 microseconds for it to do all the other stuff, okay? Because it wasn't just doing this, it was also printing this, it was also running a while statement here, so it was doing some logic inside of it. Well, that all added up to be about 35 microseconds, okay? So, and then it waited for 1,000 milliseconds, and then 35 milliseconds worth of microseconds worth of stuff happened, and it waited for 1,000 milliseconds, all right? So that would explain why we have that slightly drifting number. It's because it actually does take time to do things. So let's go now and look at the last example that I have for this video. Um, this is pretty cool, and this is kind of important to know. Because a lot of times uh, you might find yourself wanting to actually have a timer that has a, a time that you choose. Remember, if I just use milliseconds, it's just the amount of time since the app started running. Well, let's say, for example, you want to write a game and you'd like to have a timer. You'd like it to last for five seconds or 10 seconds. Well, it's actually really easy to do. Uh, in this case, I've set a duration of 5,000 milliseconds. I grab the time that since the application started running. We're going to call it our start time. And if I want the, my game or whatever to last for about five seconds, well, all I have to do is come up with an end time, and then I'm going to have my start time plus my duration equal to the end time. All right. So it started. Well, when did it start? We grabbed it. We're going to add 5,000 to it. That's my end time. Here I've just created a little block of, of characters because I'm going to have it do something while it's running. Uh, we're going to start the timer. And then here you can see this loop. While Millie's, what, Matt, while the system clock is less than the end time, which was my start time plus 5,000, it's going to do this. It's going to display these values, these characters, W-A-I-T, wait, right? It's going to be in this loop. And then when the system clock is, well, while it's less than, so in other words, if it ever gets to exceed or equal to or exceed the end time, then it's going to break the while loop. We're going to see it say done. And then I'm going to output this uh, duration. And actually, I've thrown another thing in here. Whereas, uh, I'm going to take another sampling of the time. And then we're going to take a look at what the real time really is. Okay. So if I run this, you'll see. Uh, there we go. So it's spitting this out. Okay. We're waiting for that five seconds to pass. So at least 5,000 milliseconds, that's what I asked it to. Um, but actually, it was 50 to 51 milliseconds. Well, that's because um, it entered this while statement while it was less than the end time. Okay, But then I had all these delays and all this other stuff. Well, that sometimes leads to a clock run over, so it goes past my end time. In this case, it exceeded my end time by 251 uh, milliseconds because it was probably about here when it actually the system clock hit it, and therefore it continued to go for a little bit. But by the time it checked, 
Well, the condition was no longer true. It exited, and of course we get this output. And if you want to see what it really would look like, we're going to, have to get rid of we're going to really get rid of a few of these time consumptive things, and we'll run it, and we're going to see these numbers probably be identical because if you recall, calculations and stuff like that in printing are in the microsecond range. So it's waiting five millisecond, five thousand. Yep, there you go. So it actually did take. 5,000 milliseconds uh, to do it all. Probably some difference in microseconds here, which are just not even on display. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a clue of how you can use this millisecond. Remember to create your start time and end time and create a while loop that'll trap it until that condition is met. Um, and the most important thing to remember about a do loop is it always runs at least once. All right, thanks. I'll see you.